Welcome back, everybody. Let's play Graffiti Kingdom. Last episode, we accidentally unleashed Satan upon the world, so things aren't really going too well, I guess. And we decided to use a creature that RKO made for us. Because why the hell not? I believe this is actually another one of those trees that, if you attack it, will drop a beetle. I don't know why. This gives you two weird attacks. Back kick, and back step. Back step just makes you jump backwards. Back kick attacks behind you, which can actually pre be pretty practical, but only uh, quadrupeds can do it. The number of legs that you give your creature actually turns a lots of stuff. You might have noticed that this thing moves really fast. Except I think it only has two legs, because it has really long legs, and they're kind of skinny. But quadrupeds do, in general, are faster than bipeds. Uh, th three-legged creatures do as well. I don't know why this thing is named what it is either, by the way. Oh, geez. Hey! Crap! Thankfully, Pixel can't actually be knocked down, which has some very nice side effects that one might not initially think about. That's why I don't like spin attacks. They take so long to perform. Unless I decide to use a really broken version of the spin attack, but I don't like using broken version of things. I wouldn't look as good either, so whatever. Yay. And I'm used to playing this game with way more health. I'm actually... When I did my last playthrough of this game, I actually became really overleveled because I was 100 percent the game as I went on. And whereas some people might finish the game at, say, level... I want to change the line up one second. Um, whereas some people might finish the game at, say, like, level 37, <laughs> I finished it at level 50. There you go. Usually I have a attack based. Well, usually I just have Rainbow Bear on left. It's always Rainbow Bear. I have Rainbow Bear on left, then on the right I have something I use for mobility. In this case, it's that Bootista thing that moves really quickly. And then on, up top for up, I just have whatever the hell I want to have. So I'm going to change this thing's attacks, because its attacks are really annoying me right, right now. I'm going to give it some more natural attacks. Now, we won't have... As time goes on, we won't have to do the do this weird thing where we um, alternate button presses to actually perform combos. It's one of the many... You unlock a lot of stuff in this game through leveling. To the point where the gameplay is so basic at first that it might turn you away from the game. That's a little bit better. Attacking, the, repeating the same attack over and over uh, is a lot slower than alternating, as you can see. Okay, card. More rare enemies um, generally have higher drop rates. Usually. Some of the later enemies that don't have higher drop rates, or that hound incredibly rare or time swing to make appear, don't have higher drop rates, which is incredibly annoying. Spongina, hi. I will be killing pretty much every enemy I can find, though. Don't. Thing is, don't make your graffiti creatures too tall, because you won't be able to, uh. <laughs> hit small enemies if you do. This game's actually really detailed when it comes to stuff like hitboxes. Any part of your body can be hit. Which means that if you try to give your character a ridiculously long scarf, uh, you'll have a huge hitbox because that scarf can actually be hit. And you'll take damage. Die! Yeah, I guess. 
Now what happens when we hit this thing? The door opens, and Big Daddy Sponge appears. I guess. He doesn't have any new abilities, so I'm just going to... ...attack this weird thing. Don't run away, man. Something that's actually kind of cool. What? All the different creatures in this game actually have different AI. Um, some enemies will be more prone to running away and whatnot. Yay, more health. Hey, you didn't drop a card. Oh well. You get no benefit from um, picking up a card aside from. Ooh, I need to be careful in here. Yes, Papico! I like Papico very much. Why is there a dog from the ceiling? I like Papico a lot. Oh dear. There's no benefit from um, gathering cards aside from this 100% completion. As well as being able to play as those creatures or uh, look at their. how they are made. And the graffiti editor. If you aren't interested in any of those things, you're not going to be interested in gathering all the cards. Some of these are ser some um, creatures are serious pain to the cards of too, because some will only spawn once in a level, like that big daddy sponge. Oh, there we go. If I can get some height off of a jump, I I'll just use this thing's stomp attack. I've never seen a stomp attack that jumps that high, actually. Well, I probably have. I never use stomp attacks. It's one of those really slow attacks that I don't like to use because they're really awkward. See, of awkward, I should probably change that Rutista things. Um, move set. Yay! Dog from the sky. You might have noticed by now, I don't think I mentioned it. If you have it, a uh, creature's card, a uh, little card symbol will appear uh, by its name when you're fighting it. If you don't know what this black stuff does, by the way, you'll find out soon enough. Turn! Those things are, uh, rotating parts? I haven't really played much with them. Ah. So, I was going to use... Well, I did my last playthrough was actually use Papico for, um, almost the entirety of the game as my mobility graffiti. Because Papicos jump really high. They're long and... They have long and skinny legs. So they run fast and jump really high. P-checked cow. Which of course is incredibly useful. Of course now I have this thing. So I don't have to worry about that. I'm going to change the moveset of this thing though. By the way, I never did show that golem thing. Special card. Special cards are cards that you just find in the environment that you pick up. Uh, as well as boss cards, though. These two sorts of cards are cards you um, find sitting out in the middle of nowhere. Boss cards can only be picked up once you've defeated that boss, though. They'll be found in, in the preceding level most of the time. Simes will be found in all places, though. So, things are organized by area. Everything in Canvas Plains can be found in the Canvas Plains pack. And then there are rare cards, enemies that will only appear uh, either under cer certain circumstances when you do something special, or just have a small chance of appearing in a room whenever you enter the room. Then you also have super rare cards that um, do not appear on your first playthrough of a level. They will either always appear in a certain room on subsequent playthroughs of a level, or they will only have a chance of appearing uh, on subsequent playthroughs of a level. Kind of a pain to find, but oh well. Anyways, let's make this thing actually playable. I should probably change this voice too. Dear God. Yeah, let's make it robot like. I guess. Charge sounds like it might be a really good idea. No, thumpy, I mean. Yes! <laughs> yes! Oh, he makes some seriously screwed up stuff in this game. I want to do a raise attack, because that'll 
Oh no, I guess that might not actually hit stuff on the ground. There we go. Well, Swing Kick is interesting. It doesn't do much damage at all, but it'll always, but, uh, it'll always knock down an enemy. So you're basically uh, knock out their feet from under them. Does this thing even have arms to do arm attack with? Well, it totally does. But uh, its legs probably do much more damage because they're thicker. I'm not sure. What's her attack look like? Huh. Sometimes the game just utterly fails at animating things, but all the time it actually looks pretty good. I honestly don't know what to give this. That has lots of range at least, and will hit stuff on the ground. You also notice that different creatures have different classifications, like this is called moving attack. I don't really know what they mean, I don't know how to attain the different kinds of, of classifications, that's all I'll say about that. Having played through this game, 100% of it, and made lots of creatures, I still have no idea. Anyways, let's go find out just how stupid Pixel is. Whoa! Look at the size of that thing! This is gonna be tougher than I thought! Who goes there? What are you? I am but Miss the Gate Sentry. From here onwards is His Majesty the Devil's Palace. Humans will be taken in as slaves and devils as allies. Which one are you? Like you need to ask. I'm. <laughs> ah, what's wrong with you? That's what I should be saying. All you need to do is to tell him you're a demon, and he'll let you in. So why tell him you're human? Because I am human, that's why. Right. So this is where you transform into a creature. It's basically the same thing as becoming a demon. What? Uh, that isn't something I want to do. Well, who cares? Bottom line is, you can defeat him this way. Okay, just what have you two been blabbing about up behind my back? Oh, wait, 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 wait one moment, pl pl please. Come on, you, transform already. Dude, this disc skips like crazy. Nah, it sounds like too much trouble. Didn't happen last time. Yeah, I'm human, but don't let that bother you. Just, just, just let me by. I promise it'll improve. Ow. Fight and defeat me first. If you lose, you will be my main dish. Well, you should know I never lose. By the way, this guy, Nis. You'll find that most characters in this game are named after, like, art things, like Prince Pixel or Pastel. Nis, um, his name was actually Varnish. Or the equivalent of Varnish, something like that. The original Japanese version. So boss fights are usually pretty much just fi normal fights against enemies that have more health and bigger range. Uh, some bosses will actually have abilities that you don't have yourself, but that doesn't apply to many enemies. Actually, one, one good use of charge that I ha forgot about um, it actually propels you forward pretty quickly in air, so you can actually use it to uh, make pretty big jumps. By the way, something I never did explain because I completely forgot about it, your damage dealt actually does increase as you... Uh, your damage dealt actually does increase as you... Oh, come on, this. Ow! I level up.
But I tell you, I win. <sighs> Just you wait. I'll get you someday. Boink. Okay, let's go. Um, do you mean to tell me that you could have pressed that button at any time? Like before fighting that guy? Uh... What... What are you saying? Boys shouldn't be so trivial about everything. Oh, come on, let's go! Oh, brother, there she goes again. You know... Pixel didn't do a very good job of avoiding having to turn into some kind of creature, did he? Hang had to become a creature because he didn't want me to become a creature. Copy! Now I can copy and paste things, which lets me make things symmetrical. Incredibly useful. It also just makes things easier because you can be lazy by copying things. But that's copy tools how I actually have SpongeBob's different eyes and uh, arms and feet looking the same as one another. It's very, very useful. By the way, it both bothers me like crazy and it kind of makes me happy that there's this one little thing, one little floor tile sticking up here. It's a nice detail. Uh, anyways. So this is what the Devil's Castle looks like. Ooh. Excuse me, whose side are you on? The Devil used the whole castle and all the nearby land to build this place. Uh, I wonder where everyone went. Remember what the guard said? That humans will be taken in as slaves? They are probably all trapped somewhere. Okay, so they're slaves, but what kind of slaves? I don't know. It's hard to figure out how demons think. What kinds of slaves are there? You mean you're not a demon? What? How rude! Just where did you get a ridiculous idea like that? Well, you're a creature. Well, look at you. You're not human, that's for sure. Okay, look. This guy's is... Oh, never m mind. But just remember one thing. I am not a demon. Understood? Uh, okay, sure. Have you two finished? Huh, who's there? My name is Tablet. Despite my appearance, I am just a humble demon. Oh? And what do you want with me? Please do not act so hostile. All I am trying to do is teach you all the secrets of the Devil Palace. It's only a short scarf. Secrets? Yes. The Devil himself is at the top of that castle. But, as you can see, there is nothing that can lead you up there. So, that is what I am here to tell you. And why do you want to help me? Well, just a whim, I suppose. Whether you want to believe me or not is entirely up to you. Well, okay, I'm listening. Well, to put it briefly, you must have three keys to enter the Devil's Chamber. Now, to find those keys, you must get them from the bosses who rule the worlds behind these doors. So what you're saying is, I have to go into these worlds, Defeat all the bosses and get all three keys? Exactly. However, you must get the key behind this door first, or you will not be able to go through the other two doors. Alright. That sounds easy enough. Well, as if it's supposed Can to be I linear. ask you something? Aren't you worried it might be a trap? Oh, if it's a trap, I'll just come back and beat the living daylights out of you. you, you. <laughs> you really are an interesting fellow. I am starting to like you. Ugh, don't be so disgusting. Good luck. This will be a lot more fun than I thought. You know, I don't exactly mean to be talking over other characters talking in cutscenes. But there are a lot of things I don't want to say during cutscenes that... I can't really just save until after the cutscene because it won't be relevant anymore. Something of a dilemma. Okay, so now that... Uh, 
Actually, since we unlocked a little tutorial, I do suppose it's time I show off the uh, pattern pin. Except I'm not going to show off the pattern pin tutorial, I'm just going to show off how to use the pattern pin, because I don't need a like big two-minute tutorial on that. So, activate the pattern pin. You can draw on crap. Ta-da. That's pretty much it. Now for the copy tool. For example, I want to give this thing a third leg for some reason. Copy this. Paste it. You can change its orientation as well. Which, of course, lets you mirror things very nicely. Put there, and there you go. Now, instead of going on through this level, I'm actually going to do something where that you're not really told about yet. See, if I pause the game, a new option is there called Return to Entrance. Let's do that. The entrance is actually that hub area we were just in. Ta-da! That's a nice little... <laughs> else called a graffiti stop. Too much Jet Slider Future. A uh, nice little save point here as well. Huh. I didn't realize Pixel had a different running animation if you're... Depending on how he was moving. He puts his foot forward if he's running. But if he's not moving when he jumps, he just does that. Huh. Anyways. Now we can go back through levels. Let's go off to Canvas Plains, the first area that we played in. Because there's actually a rare graffiti that can appear now. A super rare graffiti, actually that may have an ability that I want. Because it is a ability that will make things much easier um, when it comes to traversing this fine place. The fine, fine terrain that we will be encountering later on. It's just a chance to spawn in this first area. I'm pretty sure you can counter it, uh, right after your first playthrough. May take a few tries, though. If I don't get after, like, six tries, I guess I'll just give up and I'll try to find it later. But I know that you can actually encounter it pretty early in the game. It doesn't look like they appear. And maybe they'll only appear later. Hmm. Yeah. See, that's a really annoying thing about super rare uh, graffitis. All of them just don't appear earlier on. Like, there's an enemy that will appear if you hit this tree, but it'll only do that once you have a certain ability. Up until... Up until then, hitting that tree does absolutely nothing. You have absolutely no reason to believe that hitting that tree would do anything. Aside from that the trees having done something, but if you test it earlier on in the game and nothing happens, well... You have no reason to believe that it would work later on. So I don't really like this whole... this game system of super rare enemies. You also notice the enemies aren't giving as much experience, they're giving me bronze coins now. Enemies will drop less experience on subsequent playthroughs of various areas. There's also a chance that that, um, what well, I explained before, the chance that the sun's here on the left. I think that one on the right as well. No, there's a chance it'll be something else. Yes, I never pointed out. I really like how the grassers actually have, like, roots that come out of the ground when you, t when you uh, kill them. 
Anyway, so what I'm doing right now is, uh, since I didn't get to do the other thing I came here for, there is something that I will show the location of. I'll show the location of Nissa's, um, graffiti card. I'd like to kill these enemies along the way, just for the purpose of getting the experience. Yay, gold coin! Monkey! There's not really much depth to the fighting in this game. I mean, there are lots of different moves you can use, and you can try to come up with your own special combinations and strategies. But ultimately, it's, it's just whoever is able to hit the other character. Whichever creature is able to hit the other. And now we can make this Big Daddy Sponge appear again as well. Big Daddy Sponge seems to have about a 50% drop rate. Still didn't dr drop anything, but. He is a very common drop when it comes to his card, that is. This game also goes kind of easy on you with the health sometimes. Enemies, as you as you lose health, enemies will drop uh, more and more hearts for you. So it's something of an adaptive difficulty. Ow. We'll still find out with it what this black stuff is later. It's kind of annoying. Okay, level eight. Yeah, you're not gonna get fancy new ability stuff every time you level up. Uh, especially in the later levels. All the time you'll just, uh, get extra. You get a life refill, which can be very useful during certain bosses, I guess. As well as, um... Uh, increased damage, health, and energy. I see you don't go with a different AI, return creatures with different AI. Those, um... Damn it. Ow. Those creatures will, uh, always run in circles. Anyways, now, if I break this thing, I'll have a card in it. Now I can go back to the entrance, look at that card, and it's actually Nis. Or Varnish, as I like to call him. You can look at it, at all of his beauty. And all the boss cards have weird names like Littleness. Or Petite something, whatever you want to call it. Baby something. Anyways, the boss uh, refies look really cool. They do really nice looking stuff. And if you want to figure out how they do certain things, you can do it. Um, right, you want figure out how they make these effects, you can actually look at the graffiti in the graffiti editor. For example, this NIS is basically a top. Uh, this is achieved by, through making um, one part of his body a spin, the other rest of his body is appeared to. And that leg is... Why can't they see it? Here can I? And that leg is uh, attached to the body, I think. I don't quite remember. Okay. And he also has a certain animation style. Anyways, that is going to be it for this episode of Let's Play Graffiti Kingdom. In the next episode, we'll uh, head on over to Mount Here and There, and we'll learn all sorts of one fun things about elemental attacks. And for some reason, graffiti creatures can't go through doors. They can't comprehend. See you guys!